explain to us what this treat, uh, disease is that you're treating? Yes, it's Friedrich's ataxia. So it's a severe neuromuscular disease that strikes children. So you're usually diagnosed from about age 5 to 15. You're the clumsy kid, you know, on the playground. And after diagnosis, for the next 10 to 15 years, your neurologic function declines. You become dependent on a walker and then a wheelchair. And then you're bedridden and your life is significantly shortened. Their mean, uh, mean age of survival is about 35 years. So you guys just, uh, in, in a clinical trial, found this treatment, do we call it treatment, a drug to be yeah. effective in curing this or, or what? No, but we conducted a, a clinical trial called MOXIE, which is actually the largest interventional trial conducted in the disease of our lead drug, omavaloxalone. And what the top line results of this study were that after 48 weeks of treatment with OMAV, these patients had a, statistic, a statistically significant improvement in their neurologic function versus placebo. And importantly, they actually recovered about a year of decline, and then they maintained it for the 48 weeks of treatment, while the placebos declined at the expected rate. And so this is actually the first intervention to ever show an ability to modify the course of the disease. And to stop its progression. And to stop its and to progression. Stop its progression. Yeah. How common is this disease? And I don't want to get you out over your skis. How big a drug can this be for your company? Yeah, so the, um, there's about 5,000 uh, patients in the United States and about 22,000 on a, uh, worldwide. So it's an ultra-orphan disease. Mm -hmm. um, it's hard to say exactly what the disease, what the drug will ultimately do. Um, I think an important aspect of this trial is it's also proof of concept for the use of the drug in other neurodegenerative diseases because um, the foundation of Friedrichs is similar in drugs like Alzheimer's, ALS, Parkinson's, and Huntington's because disease, for example. Because it's an inflammation issue, correct? It's neuroinflammation yeah. driven by mitochondrial dysfunction, and that's really what our drugs do. They directly address that as their mechanism of action. Was this a drug that you worked on specifically to address this Friedrichs, ata what, Friedrichs ataxia? Yeah. Or was it... Was it uh, one that you were just looking at for a broader spectrum of yeah. potential neuromuscular disorders, and here on these patients, it, it yeah. showed its, its metal. Yeah, so actually our pharmacology has broad applications, and so you mentioned we have a whole set of programs in chronic kidney disease, and it's the same mechanism, just a different organ. We actually got interested in this disease because of the work done by the patient organization, the Friedrichs Ataxia Research Alliance. They had uh, sponsored research for years and identified the target of our drugs, NRF2, as a promising target for FA, and they approached us with the idea. That is great news for anyone involved in one yeah. of these groups, you know, trying to get mm -hmm. uh, something very difficult treated. We, yeah. we have to go. This could be a billion and a half of sales, that's according to one analyst at, at Leering. That's their estimate. How would you price it? How do people get access to it? So it'll be priced like, you know, any other orphan drug for a deadly disease with disease modifying effects. But I can say that, you know, we're very sensitive about the impact of drug prices on patients. We'll do everything within the law to minimize the burden on the patients. And when we set the price, we'll be doing it uh, to balance the interests of the patients, the payers, as well as If the FDA gives approval, these, if, they would presumably be taking this every year. So it, it, it could would, be costly. It would be a chronic therapy until something better came along. Okay. Yeah.